Hello, welcome. Today we're learning about some events that happened on September 11th, 2001. We're going to create our own oral history project. What do you already know about 9-11? Have you ever spoken to a fam family member before about it? I want you to write down three questions you have about the events of September 11th, 2001. Now let's watch the Global Game Changers Learning 9-11 video. Team, we need to create a service project for the 9-11 National Day of Remembrance and Service. Service project, service project, sha na na na! As you all know, with the anniversary of September 11, 2001 coming up, we need to join people all over the country to do something special to remember and honor all the patriotic heroes who helped us make it through that difficult time, and those who continue to defend our freedom. Gee whiz, me, 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 me! I would love to help! Moxie, 9-11 was a tragic event. Your enthusiasm for the project is appreciated. But I want to make sure you treat this with the respect it deserves. Sorry, i just like to help! We know you mean well, Moxie. It's just important to remember that many people were injured and killed that day. I wasn't excited about that. <laughs> Acer, what's that evil, dark cloud crummy up to now? He's spreading apathy to make people stop caring about what happened on September 11th, 2001. Um, perdón, but I think crummy infected me. I don't know what happened on September 11th, 2001. Crummy didn't infect you, Pia. You just haven't learned about it yet. And that's okay. We can teach you. It was awful, Pia. But even though it was a sad day, a lot of people like firefighters, police officers, and emergency medical personnel, and even everyday people, came together, treated each other with kindness, and stood up for our freedom. I don't know how to feel about that. Sad for all the people who died, but happy for the people who came together to save the day. I feel all mixed up, and I still don't know what exactly happened. Pia, you have just given me a top-notch idea! For our service project, let's make a video that teaches kids about 9-11. That way, we can remember what happened, honor the people who were injured and who died, and pay tribute to all the heroes who bravely helped our country. Great idea, Global Girl. With Acer's tech skills, Pia's talent for filmmaking, IQ's information, Moxie's enthusiasm, and my, ahem, <clears throat> leadership, we can make something really special. Let's do this! Moxie, sorry. Let's do this! Come on, Global Game Changers! Pia, are you ready with the camera? See, si, ready. Pia, will you ask questions about 9-11 so that the kids watching can learn along with you? I will. I have so many questions. Now, 9-11 affected two major cities in particular. Moxie, can you head to New York City to do some on-the-ground interviews? Yepperoni! Splendid. I will set my sights for Washington, D.C. Okay, Global Girl. Pia, we're live in 3, 2, 1. September 11th started as a regular Tuesday. People headed to work and school across the eastern United States. On that day, 19 men from a terrorist group called Al-Qaeda boarded four planes along with regular passengers. They plan to hijack the planes. Que? What is a terrorist group? And what does hijack mean? Great questions. What's another word that terrorist sounds like? Terrible? Exactly. A terrorist is a terrible person who does terrible things. Terrorists try to scare people into doing things they don't want to do and they use violence against other people who don't believe the same things that they do. And hijack? Hijack means to take over by force. So in this case, the terrorists on 9-11 took over planes by force 
so that they could hurt a lot of people. What did they do when they took over the planes? Instead of flying the people and the planes safely to a new place, the terrorists crashed the planes into three buildings: the two World Trade Center towers in New York City, and the Pentagon in Washington D.C. The twin towers of the World Trade Center complex were the tallest buildings in New York City. They were built to bring the world together and to peace through trade. They stood tall as a center of finance in the United States. The Pentagon is the headquarters of the United States military, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. The terrorists wanted to attack the United States at landmarks that symbolized our financial and military systems, because they wanted to damage America's strength as a global leader. And people died. Yes, everyone on each of the three planes, plus many people in the buildings. But you said four planes. The people on the fourth plane were all real-life heroes too. They stood up to the hijackers to prevent them from taking control of the plane. But it still crashed in a field in Pennsylvania, in a town called Shanksville. Nobody knows where the terrorists wanted that plane to crash. In total, two thousand nine hundred seventy-seven innocent people died that day as a result of the four attacks. Crummy's right. I don't know why we should remember this day. It's so sad. Pia, I understand how you're feeling, but even though sometimes things make us sad, it is important to remember everyone who stepped up to protect our freedom. But why? Well, remember when my grandma died last year? Yeah. I loved her, and even though I'm really sad that she's gone, do you think it would be better if I forgot her or chose not to remember her? No. Of course, you should remember her. She was so nice and special, and oh, I guess I kind of see your point. But nine eleven seems like it was really scary. I like to forget scary things. Nine eleven was scary, but Pia, always remember that love is stronger than fear. Even though the terrorists tried to scare everyone, real life superheroes looked fear in the face and said, "Not today." Come on. Let's meet some of them. Meet some of the real-life heroes? You bet. Moxie's standing by with a New York City firefighter. I'll have Acer patch us in. Acer, you ready? Moxie, you're on. Hi there. What an amazing, wonderful honor to meet a real-life superhero. On September 11th, 2001, firefighters ran into the burning World Trade Center towers to help people who were trapped inside to escape. And to try to put out the fires, I'm here with a super brave firefighter, Lieutenant Clifford Freer. Lieutenant Freer, can you tell me what you did during 9/11? It was jarring, to say the least, to see something like that happen, and that was only the beginning of it. <laughs>、uh, we mustered at work. We collected whatever spare equipment we didn't need on the actual fire trucks. Uh, for that day,、uh, the one of them had already been relocated into Manhattan,、uh, so it was only actually one truck at the firehouse when I got there, and it didn't get back until sometime two or three days later.、Uh, and we、uh, went to、uh, one of the chief's quarters,、uh, you know, about a mile or so down the road, and. There were a bunch of city buses there waiting for us, and we all loaded onto the city buses, and we got driven into Manhattan.、Um, it was very disorganized.、Uh, there was no central command post, which is something we're kind of used to having.、Uh, but something like this is not. This isn't something you can plan for. An event that's this big. It's it's. It goes by the、uh, the good people just show up and start doing work kind of theory, and that's what happened.、Um, and it wasn't just firemen or firefighters; it were EMTs and paramedics from you know over the next couple of days、uh, from all across the country that had just showed up. They weren't paid there to be there; they weren't paid to be there.、Uh, they weren't dispatched there. Some of them came without equipment. 
I very distinctly one guy showing up on a motorcycle and said, I need a place to take a nap for two hours and then I can go to work. I was, sure, you got it. <laughs> it was bizarre. It was an incredibly bizarre experience. Um, it was incredibly frightening because uh, when we got led out of the buses on the backside of the World Financial Center, which is, uh, there was a, a set of buildings that are still intact, they're still there. Uh, closer to the river than where the, the Trade Center 1 and 2 had been. Uh, so we got let out there and we came outside the buildings, but as soon as the, we got close, everything was just gray. The, the dust and uh, the debris that was still in the air completely blocked out the sun. We couldn't see the sky. Um, it was just gray, almost looked foggy. The, that kind of everything was lit up, but gray. We wandered around as a group and did what we could. Um, every now and then you just kind of had to check out and just kind of focus on something, try not to take in the enormity of everything that was going on. Um, it was probably a way to survive that, was to kind of check out for a little while. It was scary. Um, I was there for about three months. Uh, it's in early December. What's the most important thing for kids to remember about 9-11? Just understanding that uh, empathy and kindness is the only way to be. It's it's the only way to get through it. Um, and, yeah, anger and violence are uh, are a terrible plan. <laughs> it's funny when you say it out loud in such simple terms, but it's it's true. You know, it, it, it's it just uh, unfortunately the reality of our world today. You know, there is a lot of uh, conflict going on, um, and sometimes it is necessary and defensive, you know, in the defense of something or somebody. Um, but the overarching plan of how uh, a person, a group of people, a society moves forward should not be with uh, that violent end in mind. It should always be with, you know empathy and progress and love and kindness. It just, it works better. Thanks for your bravery and your sacrifices, Lieutenant Freer. Back to you, Global Girl. Thanks, Moxie. Muchas gracias, Mr. Firefighter. Let's go to DC. IQ, I understand you also have a member of the military there with you. Roger that, Global Girl. Members of the military were working in the Pentagon on September 11, 2001, like they do every day, protecting our freedom and our nation. They ran outside to help other wounded members of the military. They traveled to New York City after 9-11 to help rebuild and find people in the wreckage. Afterward, they worked to stop any more terrorists from coming to the United States to hurt us. I'm here with an awesome retired Army officer. Lieutenant Colonel Kurt Nepram. Lieutenant Colonel Nepram, can you tell me what you did during 9-11? I was Lieutenant Colonel in the U.S. Army, and I was in the uh, Pentagon. And it was a beautiful day that morning. Um, I was in room 2E487 in a meeting. At 9.37 a.m. that morning, American Airlines Jetliner Flight 77 that was full with many great Americans unloaded now with jet fuel and flown by madmen, crashed about 50 feet to the left of our conference room. The surrounding area was mostly destroyed. It was a mammoth explosion and we were instantly inside a fireball, a 250,000 pound inferno on top of our position that rose about 200 feet above the Pentagon. A humongous fireball blew right through our room, inches above our heads. Walls down, ceilings down, floors split, fires everywhere. Very intense heat on us and heavy toxic black smoke filling our lungs. We were ambushed and scores of people were in very serious trouble. A recipe for total disaster. People injured, people dying. Some of us escaped the 125 ton inferno. We fought our way out with our bare hands and our quick minds. And later we ended up in local hospitals. 
We were among the first casualties in the war on terror. But I have to say that after the attack, and here's a picture of the Pentagon, plane came in here, and my office was right here. The area in black was areas that were damaged. After the attack, it wasn't long before the United States has a response. And that very day, we had a multitude of workers there rescuing the building, setting up the great American flag right next to the area that had collapsed. While in the hospital, I met up with firefighters from New York City who were mobilized. They came down with t-shirts showing their support, Engine 53, Ladder 43, Fire Department, New York. I went and visited them several years later. And then President Bush had little miniature flags sent up in the space shuttle to give to us who were injured and to give to the uh, families of those who had perished. So it was a tragic day, but out of tragedy can come recovery. And recover we did. What is the most important thing for kids to remember about 9-11? For me, I think one of the very important things to remember is to have inner strength and resiliency to recover from anything small to large that has an adverse effect on you. And if you can have that inner strength and resiliency, then you can recover from almost anything. And you can also recover and be better and happier than you were before the event. I was able to recover and the things that I saw that were uh, very positive for me in the future was I was able to coach uh, some youth sports teams. I attended my children's high school and college graduations and I also uh, participated with my wife in uh, three milestone wedding anniversaries, which was very, very uh, important to me. Excellent job. Sir, I salute you. This is IQ. Over and out. Wow. That's pretty cool. I'm beginning to feel a little better. We're lucky to have all of these real-life superheroes around us ready to help. You got it. I agree, but we're forgetting an important group of people. The regular, everyday people. These people didn't have a uniform or a job that required them to help. They did what they could to help because it was the right thing to do. And they didn't expect anything in return. So, just like global game changers? Exactly. On that day, regular people helped each other get out of harm's way, offered food or aid to those who were helping, took down terrorists so that their plane wouldn't hurt any more people. Those were the people on the last flight. See? They were. And even though they died, they saved so many more by making sure that plane didn't hit a building. The passengers of Flight 93 were so brave to sacrifice their lives for our country. So the terrorists didn't win? No, they didn't. Not that day and not afterwards either. People came together and rebuilt their lives and their cities. The Pentagon was repaired in a year. But most importantly, Americans are still free. What about New York City and the World Trade Center towers? It took longer. But now in place of the World Trade Centers is the Freedom Tower. In all three places where planes went down, New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, there are memorials that remember the people who were killed and who sacrificed their lives, and the heroes who saved many more lives. Hey, let me pull up some videos so you can see them for yourself. Wow. 
Now, September 11th is a national day of service and remembrance, where we reflect on the amazing things people did for each other and for our country, and do service in honor of them. Do you understand now why we need to remember? And why we can't let crummy spread apathy to make people not care about this important day? I do. We need to remember so that we can honor the lives of all the people who died and so that we can show our appreciation for all the people who stood up to apathy and fear. When we face a challenge, we can remember how brave they were, so we can be brave ourselves. Exactly, Pia. Seeing brave men and women put other people before themselves gives me courage. If they can be brave, so can I. Me too. Me three! Thank you all for helping to create a truly special 9-11 project. I hope this video will help kids learn an important lesson about this day. I know I'm going to work to remember those real-life heroes. But what about the kids watching? We need their ideas, too! Excellent idea, Moxie. To all of you out there, go to 911lesson.org to learn more and to share with us how you're going to remember 9-11 and the real-life heroes who rose to its challenge. How will you combine your talents with your heart for 9-11 to create your very own superpower service project to honor the special day and ignite good? Adios! Wow, I learned a lot. Now, let's get into a group. If you're doing this at home, small groups aren't necessary. Now, I want you to get a book about 9-11. I have one here. It's called America is Under Attack by Don Brown. Choose a reader to read the book out loud to your group, or different people in the group can take turns reading. Discuss together, what is this book about? What is some information that we learned? This discussion may have answered some of the questions. It also may have prompted new ones. In fact, many adult Americans today can still remember where they were on 9-11, even if they were nowhere close to New York City or Washington, D.C. We're going to work on an oral history project where you get to interview an adult about the events of that day. Oral history is using sound or video recordings of people who experienced or lived through a part of history in order to study that particular time. What would you want to know from an adult in your life about their experiences with 9-11? I want you to write down 10 questions for your interview. Now, at some point today, I want you to interview an adult in your household about 9-11. Choose an adult that was at least five or six years old in 2001. Write down or record your interview. How do you think knowing about another person's firsthand experience with any event will help you understand more about that event? Absolutely. Hearing different people's firsthand accounts gives us different perspective and points of view. 9-11 was a day that has several perspectives and points of view. After you've interviewed your adult, think about these things. How did the interview change your perspective of the events of September 11, 2001? What did you learn that you expected to learn about? What did you learn that was unexpected? After your interview, I want you to upload it to this site. Your oral history projects will become part of a virtual museum and will allow other kids to get first-hand perspectives of 9-11. You get to tell about a part in our nation's history. Can't wait to hear your interviews. Bye.